here's what we're going to do. We're going to tackle, again, another quadratic equation. Uh, we're going to draw it, but we're going to take a different approach to it, one that will simplify some of the things that were messy and gross before. Okay? So, let's begin. The first thing I want you to observe is there's a fundamental difference between this and the vast majority of the quadratics that you deal with, and it has to do with this minus sign, right? You see how it's attached to the x squared, so this is going to change dramatically the shape of our parabola. What's the difference? Yeah, it's going to be facing down, concave down is the way we say it, rather than concave up. So you're looking for this kind of shape, and then we're going to have to get the rest of the features out of that. Okay? Now, what we can do here to make things easier for us is we could, you know, we could throw in minus b on 2a into this, we could search through all the usual things, but I want to show you another method for doing that. Okay? Here's the first step. See that minus sign? Right? It kind of attaches to everything, right? It makes the entire parabola face down. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that minus sign out of the running and like just ignore it as something we have to worry about and say, okay, let's put some brackets here and say x squared, if I've taken a minus sign out, everything else will switch in sign. Do you agree? Yes. Okay, so this guy's going to become minus 4x and then there's a plus 5. Okay, very good. Now, at this point, that thing inside the brackets, I ask you to think about how you would factorize this. Is there a number you can think of, or a pair of numbers, and they, um, they add to this, multiply to that? Minus 4 and 1. Minus, 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 minus 4 and minus 4. Minus 1 and minus 4. 5 and minus 1. Okay, look, look, minus 1 and 4. So many options here, right? Okay, I'm going to write down some things that I hear you say. Okay, I heard 4 and minus 1. I heard 5 and 1, I heard 2 and 3, two and three. <laughs> just for the loss. Five, minus, five, minus, one. minus 5 and minus 1. Wait, isn't it minus 5 plus 1? Minus 5 plus, minus 5 plus 1? Did I miss any options? <laughs> just get out, okay. Um, do any of these work? Can you take it off? <laughs> Don't worry, we have everyone's options here and I'm pretty confident to say I don't think any of these work, do they? They all don't work, what does that mean? Okay, so some of us are saying, okay, my next thing that I should do is launch into the formula. You totally can if that's what you wanted to do, okay? But there's an even bigger problem. There's a bigger problem, right? I want you to think about this particular equation, right? Uh, the particular A and B and C that I've got. And I want you to tell me about this guy. You remember this is an abbreviation? This is an abbreviation for the discriminant, right? And the discriminant we know, of course, is the thing underneath the square root. It's b squared minus 4ac. What's b squared in this case? Minus 4. B squared in this case will be 16. Minus 4ac in this case will be minus 4ac. You okay with that? Which I think is minus 20. Now, I don't even need to know what that's equal to. Do you see what I mean by, or do you see how before we say, oh, why do we care about the discriminant? It's an extra thing you have to work out. I don't even need to know its exact value to know. Forget, forget all of this. Like we were all like wondering, like, oh, I wonder what the factorization is. We don't even need to search for a factorization because this tells us there isn't one. Does that make sense? Okay. So you're not going to find roots for this thing. This does not have x intercept, right? So we still want to find all that other stuff we mentioned before that we could use completing this, sorry, we could use the axis of symmetry, but instead I want to call on some knowledge that we didn't use in period zero at all, which is completing the square. So I'm going to rewrite this thing here, right? And I'd like you to have a look at what I've got here and what you would do to this if you were to complete the square. There's a thing that we usually think about adding on, and it's a, it's a number here, and we have to sort of look at something in here to work out what number we should add on. Times the right? one times the hmm. I'll give you a clue. I'll give you a clue. It has to do with this number. Right? What are you going to do? We're going to halve a coefficient. It's the coefficient of x. Halve it and then square it. So when I halve this, I get negative 2. When I square it, I get 4. Okay. Now see what I've just written now? Number one, it's incomplete. I've still got more stuff to write. But number two, what I've written there is a square. Okay, So that's useful to me. right? I can factorize it nice and neatly. I can't factorize that, but this I can. Now I said it's incomplete. I just wrote plus four, but that's not what this says. Right? What could I write here to make it equal to what I wrote here? Yeah, go ahead. Go. Minus four. 
Okay, so I could do minus four and that would cancel with this, right? And then I could write the plus five that I had before. That would totally work. There's an even easier thing that's more directly you can get there. Yeah, I've got five and I wrote four. The difference is one, right? Like so, are you okay with that? Like these lines are now complete and the same, okay? All right, now. What am I going to do with this? Well, what I wrote down, these first three terms here, remember I said, oh, those are a square. Those are really nice. Rasen, did you have a question? Uh, so, could we just say 4 plus 1 is 5, so we just write down 4 plus 1? Wait, what? Sorry, that's you're talking about this line here? Oh, no, yeah, when we have a, when we, when we yeah. Yep. There's so we, plus 5 there. Yes. We just change it to plus 4 plus 1. Isn't that what I did? But didn't we use the formula, like half of the... That's what you just did. That's, that's what you asked me to do, right? You asked me to get 4 plus 1. The reason why it's 4 plus 1 and not, for example, 2 plus 3 or some other combination, right, is because I wanted the 4 by halving and squaring this. That's why I know plus 4 plus 1 is the thing to write. Had I, had I written plus 2 plus 3, it would still be true. It just wouldn't be useful, right, because then it's not a square. I can't factorize. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I think I have done what you're asking, but I had to know what I was going to put in here, how I was going to break 5 up. Okay, now this is the thing I wanted, it's a square. See how this plus 1 is here and there's a minus sign all the way out the front? So I'm going to write that as minus 1. It's outside the brackets now. Are you okay with that? Yes, Justin. Okay, let's have a look. See this plus 1? It's inside the brackets. But everything inside the brackets has a minus sign attached to it. Do you agree with that? Yeah, are you following with me? Yeah. Okay, you guys with me? You okay? All right. So the whole point in me doing this weird thing and writing it in this way was so that I could write it as a square. This thing is something squared. What is it? Squared. X plus two? X minus two, sorry. Minus, right? It's, it's that guy there. This guy's always positive, right? Because it gets squared. But this guy tells us the sign here. And then there's a minus one. So this is what I've got. Okay. Now, you might think like, oh, what's the point of that? Okay, why is this useful? I can actually read off the axis of symmetry and the vertex immediately just from the way this is written. No other formula is required. Okay, how am I going to do this? Let's think about it. Um, beside where you've got this, can I ask you to draw for me uh, one, two, three, four small sets of axes. Four small sets of axes just beside here. Can you do that for me? I think it's four. Okay, here's what we've got. So these are fairly small and fairly messy. They're going to be used by us as thinking tools. Okay, and then we're going to do like a proper one and we'll make that one big. Okay. Now this guy here is, we know it's going to be a parabola, but we want to use the way that it's been written to try and work out what kind of a parabola it is. So here's what I want you to do on the first set of axes. Okay, we're going to draw this like so. Okay, this is just a regular old y equals x squared parabola. y equals x squared. Okay? Now, we then change it in a bunch of ways, right? And you can see all of these bits and pieces, they all make minor adjustments to this same parabola, right? Sorry, that's a bit bad. It should go right through the origin. Okay? Now, the first thing is, right at the beginning you told me, without doing any like calculations or manipulation, you told me it was face down, right? Where in the equation do I get the fact that it's face down? Yeah, it's that, it's that minus at the front, right? Do you agree with that? So I'm going to say, okay, well this guy, if I turned it upside down, right, that would be y equals minus x squared. I've flipped it vertically, okay? 